Okay, yeah. Because I want to record the the class so that I can send it to you later. So let me share the screen. Yeah, this is what we want to look at. What do we use logic for? Uh, in applied economics, we normally use logic model for prediction of business cycle. For instance, now you may want to look at why do we have recession in a, in a Swatini or any country, Africa. So in that wise, we collect um, data over the years. We look at the GDP. Generally, when you have negative GDP, either for certain months or certain um, um, uh, quarter, <coughs> definitely you look at that as indi indicator of uh, recession. So then you, then you look at various factors that can affect the business cycle, like stock prices, oil prices, interest rates, GDP, uh, long-term bond sales. Is there the, maybe new building project in terms of ST development? And various other variables that can affect probability of recession. Another, another area where we normally use logic model is when we are trying to look at willingness to pay uh, projects. That is um, whether you are using single or double band uh, discretized models. For instance, we want to look at willingness to pay for green electricity, willingness to pay for organic food, Willingness to pay for electric vehicle, willingness to pay for Corona vaccine, and <laughs> so many things. So we use logic model because in, um, in those instances, you have uh, what is called binary variable as your dependent, that is yes or no, Adopt, don't adopt. And so that is another, 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 another use of logic model is an adoption of technology. Uh, for instance, the use of credit card, uh, improved agricultural input. You don't want to adopt fertilizer, adopt, um, adopt the use of uh, improved seeds, adopt irrigation technology, so on. Um, even in, in this current uh, coronavirus situations, maybe adoption of uh, N95 nose marks for everybody, and so on and so forth. So anytime when you can identify a binary variable, yes or no, just two, then um, you can apply logic model to actually examine the probability of adoption or prediction or willingness to do one thing or the other. So we be I will show you how to do it because that is the essence of this class. Then I will give you um, later I'm going to give you an assignment which we're going to do. And I'm going to guide you how to do it. So the starting point, I want you because you can I will send this to you. You can actually follow what I'm saying and you are going to get it done correctly. Anytime you open your R studio, I will try to demonstrate with um, with an example. The starting point is to set your working directory. Your working directory 
your working directory is the is the folder where you have all your what is it called your data and every other thing you want to use that is your working directory you can save it on your desktop or save it in document or anywhere you want to save it then you have to load necessary packages as well as import your data that you want to use i will illustrate that with you so in logic model that we want to use today um necessary packages include ISLR, summary tools, then PSCL. And I think I, I ask you to make sure that you download, uh, that you install, I'm sorry, you install these packages on your R Studio. Did you do that, everybody? Yes, Prof. Yeah, that's good. So the starting point is whatever you want to do in any form of analysis, the starting point is descriptive statistics. Whether you are using um, time series, panel, cross-section data, anything you want to do, you must first describe, you must first describe the data. That's the starting point. So, and we are going to make use of a data which I call defaults. Um, we shall look at the data later. So, and I'm, I'm trying to get the descriptive statistics here. Here I have stat one with this is the object. This is the function, D-E-S-C-R, describe. So I will, I will tell you more about it later, but I'm just showing you what we're going to do. So after obtaining the descriptive statistics, you want to view it. You can actually view it on our studio or you can export it to your working directory. This is what we are trying to do here. Then, apart from summary statistics, this one will give you the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, the maximum, and so, on and so forth. So, but apart from that, you will still have to obtain the frequency distribution. So, to get the frequency distribution, we use freq1. So, so if I illustrate that one too. And after we have done that, then we estimate our logit model. We will see. And after we have done that, then we estimate our logit model. So you will see more of it by the time you are doing the practice. But since you are going to have this great opportunity, you are trying to do the other thing. Assignments. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, after the estimating the logic is there, you have to compute the odd ratio. Because the logic actually is form. And um, we don't think of log ratio. We don't, that is not the way we think. Either we think in terms of odd ratio or we think of probability. So, if you want to calculate the odd ratio, the odd ratio is just the likelihood that something will happen. So what is the likelihood? For instance, if you, if you want to work on credit availability, you want to see, okay, what's the likely probability that I will have access to credits? So um, that will depend on certain factors. That is what the odd ratio is telling you. Or you can take it to marginal analysis. The marginal analysis will actually tell you the probability. For instance, we are looking at um, 
prediction of business cycle as, as, as a typical example. So the probability that the country will go into recession depends on certain things. So if you want to really look at the probability, the factors affect the probability now. And the extent to which each factor will affect the probability, then we'll be talking of the marginal analysis. Um, hey, sorry. Let's come back here. Yeah. Then there is what is called the diagnostic test. That is, I want to test maybe the reliability of my model, whether it is okay or not. So in that wise, what we try to do is we reduce the number of the variables that we have. And we now compare the models using analysis of variance. Then another thing we do is again the house. So, but for sure, but for sure, I will still illustrate this for you for, for every one of us. Who is this? Sorry, some people are just joining, so I have to be. So before we move to the practical aspect, there is an assignment we should we do. I will put us through this assignment after the after when, when putting us through. If you don't understand anything, this is the beauty of having the lecture. Ask questions because if I just I can just post you to you without the, the the lecture. But the essence of the lecture is for you to ask questions actually and get understanding. So the assignment you will do. Um, I will explain the way to do it. You will have to go to World Bank Enterprise um, website, WBA. If you, if you click on Google and you type World Bank and Enterprise, it's going to take you to the website. Another thing is World Bank Development Indicator website. Either of the two, the one, any, any one of your choice. And then um, you can either go to World Bank Development Indicator website, or I will direct you to how you can actually extract your variable um, using R, even without going directly to the website to download, but you can go to the site to download your data. So what do I want to do from the websites? You want to answer any of these questions using the data you are going to collect. Just pick one, not two, just one. So with the data that you are going to collect, either from World Bank Enterprise, from one back end enterprise, it's just one data on this team. That is 2016 um, World Bank Enterprise data on this team is there. And then um, the data covers uh, 150, 150 different firms in this country, 150. Out of which 93 are small and medium scale SME. So if you have that data, you can answer any of these three, determinant of credit availability, determinant of female labor participation, gender and firm performance. You can answer any of these. You can pick any, any one of them. Yeah. But if you want to use World Bank Development Indicator, then you'll be looking at factors driving recession in Swatini. So just 
and just have to follow the, the first slide I showed you on the prediction of business cycle. So let us see how it works. Um, this is app now, and I want you to follow me. Um, why I'm trying to open the Al Studio? Do you have any question? Me why? <laughs> Off we do. Any question? No, not yet, sir. Not yet. Okay. Zumalu, I can see you. You have question now? Of, or, or you are postponing it? <laughs> not, not yet, Prof. Not yet. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. So, can you see the? Can you see the house studio clearly? No, not yet, Prof. We are still on the slide. Okay, so I think I should. Okay, let me let me share with you. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, now you should be able to see the app. Can you now see it? We can see it, Prof. Oh. <clears throat> so this is the this is what I'm trying to, to see, please. Now, please pay attention because this is very, very, very important. So I said you have to set your working directory. So to set your working directory, you have to call me a session. New, you, know, you come to set working directory, choose directory yeah so it's going to take you to i said it's better you have a folder you want to use on your desktop you can see now <clears throat> i come to desktop here and on my desktop i normally like to use i uh, amc so for folder I create your own. So let's say I want to use AMC so far for that. So that's it. So I said open. So that is how to set my folder. If I want to look at the content of this folder, I call me a file. These are all what I have there, as many as possible. So Now we want to look at the necessary packages and the data we want to use. So if that is what we want to do, then you have library ISLR. So then you run, so it's, it's clear, it's, it's okay. Library summary tools, or descriptive statistics, you run. That's all right. Library PSCL, we normally use that one to get the uh, R square. 
from that's okay we have mfx mfx is used for um to obtain the margin analysis so run good so the data that we want to use is default that's this this data is inside ISLR. So if you don't have ISLR, you cannot get the data. It's, it's, it's the data that is inside ISLR. So let's run it. Good. So let us check the data to really see how the data look look like. Then we now type asking question this is the data set so to define it run to so be able to look at what the data is so the data is a simulated data set containing information on credit credit card default customers so the aim is to predict um the probability of credit card debts that is the, that is the essence yeah So uh, you have uh, various um, various uh, variables. Um, for instance, you have um, okay, no problem. We can see. So we have. Default is a dependent variable. That is whether you default or you don't default on your credit card. So it is yes or no, like I said earlier. Then some of those uh, factors that may affect it, we have whether you are a student, yes or no. Uh, the balance on your credit card, uh, your income, so those are just and then if you want more information, then you can maybe download that reference. So now, the, we want to now look at the descriptive statistics. Well, okay, let's say you want to look at the data sets itself, the way it looks like, you can say fit that uh, we're not just working with what you don't, um, don't know default. Run. So this is the data set. Can we see the, 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 the data sets very well? Yes or no? No, it's still on. So now you have defaults, yes or no, whether this default is okay. Okay. I default on my credit card or I don't default. Here is whether I'm a student or I am not a student. This balance is the balance of my, of my credit card. And this is my income. So our interest is to use students balance income for instance to find out whether i'm going to default i'm not going to default and this is very, very important so the starting point is to describe the data sets so to describe see the way it's done the descriptive statistics i call it Start one. 
start one and you will now see which which this is my uh data set default what do i want to do with this default describe d-e-s-c-r what am i describing default that is my data set i put here stats equals to common the reason why i say common is i don't want all the statistics if i don't put it there it's going to give me so long a list but i just want but i just want the mean the minimum the maximum um yeah the number of observations so let us run it run this now good so after running it, if you want to look at your results, you say view, view start one. So let's run it and see. Yeah, so this is the results. I think uh, your, our pictures is blocking it. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to... Let me see what I can do. Also <laughs> no, I want to hide. <laughs> I want to see whether I can hide so that we can see clearly. Also. Oh, no, you're moving. Oh. I just want to minimize, but it's not. Yeah, good. I hope we can Am see I now. Am I the only yes. one? Who... Sorry, Pop. Am I the only one who has the uh, USB antivirus on the screen? Uh, no, I'm seeing the results here. Okay. Yeah. Me too. I hope you can see the results. I can see the results, Professor. Okay. Now, Fundo, can you see the results? No, I can't. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. Hey, Lucy is just joining, so let me let me welcome him. <laughs> so now, this is the result. We can see it clearly now. This this is fine. Yeah, but you know, yes. I want to make sure that this result is in my working directory. So if I want to show it in my working directory, I will say view my result, which is start one. Then I create a file for it in working directory. So if I want to do that, I will I will run this run. So now it has taken it to my folder, which is AM604. And uh, in case I want to show that one, um, let's look for it. So I need start one. Start, start, start one. Okay, this is it here. Yeah? Start one. So you can now open it. You open it with Microsoft Word. Yeah. So let's open it with Microsoft Word.
Okay, now, can you see the results? So this is the result in Word. So now you, you design your table. Yeah, you can design your table from here. Yeah, so, so now I have my result for balance, income, the mean, standard deviation, minimum, median, maximum, number of valid observation, percentage of valid observation. So I think, uh, I think it's clear. Okay, uh, yeah, what is your question? I think one person wants to raise the question. Who is trying to ask a question there? Oh, yes, Prof. Um, Bavugile here. Yeah. Um, I can see your results from the R script. Um, from my side, it's not showing uh, the transition to Word. But you can see it here now. Yeah, I can see it well there. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, that's, this, this, this is the result, yeah. yeah. And you can show it in a new window. You can just click, you know, that is, can you see this small, um, small button here? Mm -hmm. Uh, you can just click on it. I think it's, it's a shorter way. You click on it. It's going to show it in, um, in the clear, the descriptive status. Yeah. Can you see it clearly now? This is the result. Hello? Yes. Yes, uh, yes, oh, bro. Uh, good. That was good. very clear. Yeah, very clear now. So no. and the moment the moment you get to this place, there is no problem. You can just you can select all, then you copy, then you paste it in your Mac Microsoft Word. It's going to be perfect. Yeah. So let's let's move. Now, let us now run our logit model. Please, to run a logit model, you use generalized linear model, GLM. That's what we normally use. So here you have, I call it logit one. You can call it whichever name you like. GLM, this default, is my dependent variable that is yes or no, I default or not. The dependent variable must be binary. Don't forget it. It's either yes or no. I have it, I don't have it, I adopt, I don't adopt. So then as a function of this, our um, variables now, balance, we are using balance and income as our independent variable. Yes, then the probability of default. Then we have family equals binomial link equals to logit. That's how to do that. Then we then our data set. This is the data we are using default. So you have done that correctly. I run it. Run. Yeah, so after running it, you can, you can get the summary, summary. Log it one. So, run. Yeah, you can now see your results. So the result is out. The meeting host will let you zoom in. So this is this is this is the result. Um, 
but you can actually now you can you can export your results into your um, you can export your that, your results <coughs> into your folder because it's always good to make use of your folder that's very very important most of the time so use stargazer that's the reason why uh, we need stargazer to do that so we are stargazer what am I exporting is logit one. That is what I have to What type? HTML. Then out. That is the name that I want it to be for my working directory. Mm. That's how to export it. So um, let's run it and see. Run. Yeah. So the moment you have this, um, I've exported this. You have to understand the name that is Logit 2 2. Logit 2 2. Logit 2 2. So Logit 2 2. Logit 2 2. LM that should be up. So this is. Mm -hmm. so, so you can open it with word. Can you see these results? Dependent variable balance income constant. No. 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 Okay. I will share it is it means it's part of my share window. I miss I So don't worry. But you can see this, all these ones now. You can see this. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Can you now see? You have to see now. Yes, sir. Yeah, so this is the results, and uh, you can now. We have table design, can design your table clearly. Yeah, so this I now is the to look like. So, and uh, let us now look at how to interpret because interpretation is very, 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 very important. Yeah. Here you have 0 0.006, and it is you have three stars. Yeah, these three stars is showing you that this coefficient is statistically significant at one percent. So we are now sure that balance affects the likelihood of default. Income also will affect the likelihood of default. But as, as it is, because we are using logics, it's showing that the balance affects the log likelihood. 
So we are talking of log odd ratio here. And like I said earlier, we don't actually think in terms of log. Nobody thinks in terms of log. It's either we are thinking in terms of the hot ratio, or we are talking in terms of the probability. And that is why we need to extend the analysis a little bit further. So we need to obtain the hot ratio. So to obtain the head to to obtain the odd ratio. What you are trying to do is you are now converting the log. Because all those ones, they are just in log form. You are converting the log into uh, um, numeric, uh, numeric, uh, 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 what is, number. So when you want to convert, um, log to number what you use is exponential so this is exp these are our coefficients so it's very straightforward to do so let's let's run this and look at the results yeah so now you now have 1.005 for balance 1.0002 for income so these are the hard ratios now. So these are the likelihood. This is this is how balance affects the uh, likelihood, not log likelihood now. Likelihood of default. But still, I'm not actually comfortable most of the time trying to explain things in terms of odd ratio because odd ratio is. Actually, the ratio of Sussex to failure. So we talk more about uh, in terms of probability. It's, it's, it's always easier to understand when you talk in terms of probability. Everybody will understand you. So this is why we now use the marginal analysis, which is MX. Apologies, Prof. Apologies, Prof. Um, Please switch your screen back to the R Studio. I'm still on the word file. This I'm on R Studio now. Uh, uh, my screen is on the word. Me too. Your own screen. So, yeah, mine as well. Yeah. How many of us are already on uh, R Studio now? It's supposed to be on R Studio. Switch your Well. I'm still on the word. Uh, also still on, on the word, word as well. <laughs> on the word file, Prof. Word file. Okay. Wait. Wait. So let's 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 no. let's, let's, let's come back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of us are supposed to be on the uh, our, our studio now. Yes. yes, it's our studio now. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. Our studio. Yeah. So now we want to look at the marginal analysis. It's very important. For the marginal analysis, the function is logic MFX. Very straightforward. This is the dependent variable default as a function of the dependent, which is balance and income. This is your data set default. So you are, you are trying to do that, then let's run it and we get our results. So this is our results. So here now you have one point, this zero, this multiply by 10 raised to the power minus five. So this is 0 0.000122. And this is multiplied by 10 to the power minus six. So it's going to be 0 0.000000. So now, if you want to interpret this, it's very straightforward to interpret. So the way you interpret it is now in terms of probability. So, and don't forget, we are looking at probability of default. So, To interpret it now, you know, this is very, very small, 0, 0.000. That is the 
um, if your balance, listen to how I'm going to interpret it. If your balance is increased by one unit, if your balance is increased by one unit, the probability of default is this. It's 0 0.000 something. So it's very, it's, it's, it's very small. If your income increased by a unit, the probability of default will be this. Did you get it? No. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. No. I will, I will Please come again, Paul. Pardon? Can you please go back yeah, to the interpretation? Yeah, I want to go back to the interpretation because that is very important. Yeah. Our interest is to look at determinant of the probability of default. We have default. We want to we want to see how balance and income affect the probability of credit card default. This is credit card default. And now we come here, our marginal effect. So, you know, this is positive. This is positive. It's not negative. This is positive. 1.222 something. Yeah. So now, this is this is showing us that the pro, like if my balance increase, since it's positive, it means if my balance increase. And my balance will increase. You know, my balance is measured now in, in currency. So if my balance increased by a unit, the probability that I am going to default is very low. It's 0 0.0000122. Very, very low. And uh, if my income increases by a unit, the probability that I'm going to default also is uh, much more low, uh, 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 lower. Because here you have is 0 0.0000000. So it's very, very, very minute. So this is telling me that I'm not likely going to default if my income and my balance increases. Did we get that? Yeah, I'm waiting for your for your for your response. <laughs> Did you get my explanation? Or I don't you want know, to go no, over no. it again? Because that's the most important aspect of this class. You must be able to interpret correctly. Yes, can we go over, over to again, Prof? Okay. I want to take it slowly. Please. Our a question is to look at how balance and income, you can see it in this equation, affect <laughs> probability that I'm going to default. Hmm? Uh, may I, I have a question, Prof? Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, yes. The probability, I hear you talking about the probability, but when I'm looking at, okay, I can see the balance. I can see the 1.2292, but I can't see which is the probability here. The, all, the marginal effect. Yes. Can you, can you see the marginal effect? Yes, I see mm -hmm. the marginal effect. Okay. So the marginal effects, this, this one that is DF over DX, this one uh. is the probability that we are interpreting. Mm -hmm. 
you and I heard you that? saying zero point zero something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you have one point two two nine. E minus zero five. You do get it. So this E minus zero five is like saying one point two two nine two multiplied by ten raised to power minus five. Oh, okay. Oh, I understand now. Uh, and if you say one point two two nine to multiply by ten this to power minus five, let me please read to then you are talking of zero point zero 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 something. Did you get it now? Yes, Prof. Thank you. Yeah, okay. That is uh, that is what I'm I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I'm talking about. So, which means the probability is very very yeah, it's very exponential. Deep. Yeah, that that's good. So. Um, you know, in the in this one, we include balance and income. Um, you can reduce, we can we can we, you can reduce the number of variable. Let's say our interest is to look at balance alone. Now we will meet income. So we run it again. Then after running it, let's let's run it. Then after running it, let's let's get the summary. Summary log it to. And um, let's get the marginal. Let's get the marginal marginal effects. So let's get the marginal effect. So let's go this one too. So let us remove income here. Yeah. And let's run this. So let's let's get our result, and I want at least one of you should interpret MFX logic two. No, no, sorry, I don't have to ask somebody. So I did somebody from. Okay, now you have the marginal effect in case of just one variable, which is balance. Uh, who can interpret this probability for me? This DF, DF. Who wants to try? Someone should try. Zumalo, you want to, you want to, you want to try? Uh, I'm listening. <laughs> okay, can I try? Yeah, try. Nothing to Okay. Mm -hmm. I think oh, Tembain. The name is Tembain. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, okay, what this means is that if the balance increases by a unit, the Good. probability that, I, that I'm going to default is 0 0.000128. Shall we clap for her? <laughs> yeah, that is great. Perfect. So, yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Yeah, that's, that's good. So now, you know now we run to, <clears throat> we now have two models. We have logit one, we have logit two. So you have, to, you have to compare. Which one are you going to, is there any difference between them? That is the starting point of comparing the models. 
So to do that, we use analysis of variance. You can see that change for say ANOVA, logit one, logit two, then we use chi square, then it's equals to chi square. So we want to do that, you run this. Now let's look at it. Our interest is just this, this, this last one, that is probability of chi square. You can see that just check the star. The moment you have star here, it means there is significant difference between logit one and logit two. And what is the meaning of this difference? It means question. Sorry, uh, can you please come again? What does the star means? This star means this p value or chi square is significant at one percent. You can see it now. It's significant at one percent. Is the mean? Just believe it is significant. Yeah, that's the most important thing. So now, if it is significant, how do you now interpret it? It means there is a difference between model one and model two. So which one must I choose between model one and two? We now have to choose the one with uh, the, the largest number of variables. The one with more variables is the one you have to choose. So which means I will have to go back to logit one and use it as my policy model, the one that I'm going to interpret and make recommendation on because it contains more variables. So that is the essence of this uh, analysis of variance. So every other thing I'm going to do now, I have to do it with logit one. I have to discard logit two because logit two has one variable, logit, logit one has two variables. So I have to use the one with more variables because this is showing me that having more variables matters because there is a difference. So then I need to calculate the R square <clears throat> so that I can know um, um, the variation in the probability of uh, default that is explained by the two variables, balance and income. So you want to do that is to use PR2. So there you run. So now our interest is this McFadden. This is the one I want you to pay attention to. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are dealing with McFadden, McFadden R squared. So in our own situation is 0 0.46. So this is showing you that 46% duration in the probability of defaults. It's actually explained by balance and income. Any question before we proceed? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. Um, with an interpretation of um, 40, 46 percent of the two variables, uh, please assist. 46 percent. Okay, let me, let, let me take it again. Don't, don't worry, okay. I will take it again. Now you know that we are looking at how two variables, that is balance and income, affect default. I hope you understand it up to that level. Mm. Yes. Okay? That's okay. So now you have 0 0.46 here. You know this is 0 0.459, so this is 0 0.46. Yes. Mm. Which is 46%. Yes. So, which means 46% of 
change in the probability that I'm going to default is actually explained by the two variables, balance and income. So balance and income explain 46% change in the probability that I'm going to default. It's clear. So which means I still have some other variables that I have not included that may account for almost uh, 54. If you, if you take 45% from 100, you have uh, 50, that's 54. So which means I can still bring in more variables if I want to explain the probability of defaults. That is just what this means. Meaning there is no concrete um, conclusions you can make just based on the two variables for this model. No, you say, uh, yeah, we have made a concrete, a concrete, um, a concrete explanation of how they affect the probability of default. But what we can say is that they are not the only variables. We still have some other variables that we can bring in. Oh, all right. Yeah. But to me, 46 is still okay because you see, you are just considering two variables. And if two variables explain almost 40 something percent change in something, to me, it's, it's, it's high. So it's okay by me. Yeah. Are we together? For now. For now. Okay, that's good. So now let's. I want us to look at. Um, so I want us to consider the note that I sent to you. We just rush through that one very quickly. And uh, that's sorry, me. Prof. Yeah. Can I... There's a question. Please. Okay. Yeah. Can I... Let me let me hear your question. Can you please go back to the R Studio? There's something I'd like to to ask based on the the results. Okay. 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 The other figures, because I can see the, the 0 0.46, which we have just interpreted, then what are the other variables, the other figures? What do, what do they represent? Oh, okay, okay, okay. The other figures, this for instance, this is log-like likelihood estimates. Um, the reason why we focus on this R squared you cannot calculate this without all these ones. You understand it now? We, are, oh, we actually one. use the log likelihood in order to calculate this McFadden R squared. Is that clear? So basically, these ones are a working which gives us this McFadden R squared. Perfect. Okay, so they're insignificant when we interpret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. When you want to interpret, you don't bother yourself about all these all these things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Any other question before <clears throat> before we move to um I want to quickly uh, take us through the the last slide that I sent to you. Okay, in case there is no question, then let me <clears throat> let me stop this here, then I bring and um so let me there is this the second note that I call it.
Let me open this. Yeah, can we see this slide now? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I hope all of you receive it. Yes. Yeah, good. Please take notes. I will just take us through uh, very quickly before we stop the lecture. Um, Who is this person just coming? So we're looking at sample size determination, validity and reliability of questionnaire. You see, anytime you want to do any serial study, usually you don't have enough money, you don't have enough time to cover every, um, every member of the population that you want to use. So at the end of the day, you resort into taking of some, and that is, but how do you now decide the sample size? What number of respondents am I going to interview? That's very, very important, particularly when we are conducting uh, cross-section survey. So, and that is what we quickly want to look at. So what is a sample and what, is, what are the methods of sample size determination? A sample is a percentage of the total population in many statistics. You can use the data from a sample to make inferences about a population as a whole. For example, you can use the standard deviation of a sample and um, you can find the sample size if you know the standard deviation of that uh, population. So, and that is what we are trying to do. So, but how do you now determine the number that I'm going to use apart from using formula? If you are working with a very small population, we conduct what is called a census, which means you don't have to limit yourself to taking of um, maybe um, to having a sample size. You don't have to worry yourself. If you have a small population, a small population will depend on your budget and time constraint anyway. You just conduct a census. It means you have to interview everybody. Yeah. For example, if you are working on agricultural economy students in Swatini, it may take a day, just take a census, and then there you are, and you interview everybody, prepare your questionnaire, and so on and so forth, covering everybody, if it's possible. But um, let's say you're working on all the entire students in uh, Eswatini, <laughs> definitely, you know that you don't have the resources to do that, then you have to take sample. 
But since you are working with very small population, just get ready to interview all your things. I remember when I was doing my PhD, um, all the all the all the cocoa exporters, all of them registered cocoa exporters in um, southwestern Nigeria. All of them were 40, no, 44. So since all of them then were 44, I asked to conduct the, the census. I don't have to be taking sample of all of that. I easily interview all of them. So if you are working using such a small population, then get get ready to interview almost of the So another method that you can use is if you discover that someone has done the kind of study you are doing, chances are that your type of study has already been undertaken by someone else. So if you have access to such um, a study, particularly if it's published in a very um, reputable journal, then you can actually adapt the sample size used by that particular person. But it has an, a, a disadvantage because you are relying on another person that the person has done the correcting. Because if the person has not done the correcting, any error the other person has made in the calculation of the sample size automatically will be transferred to your study. But it's still another method. Um, another method is to use table. And uh, most people are using this. I think uh, some of the PhD students, current PhD students, uh, are trying to use this method. It's, it's, it's about the most straightforward one that you can quickly use. Um, it is called the um, Cressel and Morgan table. So he used a formula to produce the table, giving a likely sample size you can, you can choose, depending on the population. And uh, this is the formula the guy used. Um, but I, think, uh, I want to show you the table. Someone is talking. Sorry, I want to show you the my system is frozen sort of. Okay, yeah, this is where we're supposed to be. So can you see the, the, the table now? Yes, sir. Yeah, so this is the table. You know what this table is saying is that if your um yeah, it's so much early means no problem. So if your if if your population is 220, for instance, then you select 140. If it's 230, you use to select 144. If it's 240, you select 148. If it's 1 to 136, you, you, you don't have to take any sample. You conduct the census. But if it's something like 1,100, then you have a 285. And if you are dealing with 1 million, which uh, to me, <laughs> yes, it's possible, but you are dealing with something like 1 million, then you take about 384. Yeah. So that's the table. 
So another method you can use if you don't want to use uh, Cressil and Morgan table is you can actually use sample size determination calculator. There are so many free online calculator for calculating sample size. If you know number of the population and you know the standard deviation, you just need to just type it in, then it's going to give you the likely sample size that you have to use. Yeah. Then the fifth method is you can actually use your own formula. And then I want you to read this yourself. Practice this question. The formula is straightforward. Practice this question. I will not say more than that. Yeah. Hmm. So this is it. Practice this question. It's straightforward. So even the, all this primary school and the, all these uh, high school students, we understand it. Not to talk of big guys like you. Yeah. Then um, in previous lecture and in previous slide, because I don't know whether we actually got to that level. In previous um, slide, we have survey method of, of um, survey method of collecting information. And one of such survey method is the use of your personal interview, to develop your questionnaire. But anytime you are working with questionnaire, you need to actually test for the validity and the reliability. And this is very, very important. So I want you to go through these various methods. You look at the advantages, disadvantages. You can read all these things yourself. So steps to take if you are designing the questionnaire then the validity that you have to, to do. Some of them are easy to understand, just reach through. That's why I prepared notes and I've included so many things. Reach, reach through, reach through, reach through. So, and uh, one way to test for the, the reliability of your questions is the use of correlation matrix. And um, I want you to make sure you go through this slide very, very well, so that you know how to match your data and calculate, um, script, uh, calculate uh, what is it called? Uh, correlation analysis That's very, very important. So, and uh, if you go to my simple sites, that is, um, I will send the link to you. I think I've sent it to you sometimes. Our agrometrics, you will see it there. It's well explained the way with, uh, with the example. So now, various types of validity, validity tests you have to carry out. Concerning your questionnaire, you know you have what is called content validity, face validity, concurrent, predictive, construct, and so on and so forth. And I want you to make sure you understand them. You understand them very well. Some of them read this, use further information either the internet or some very good. Uh, very good uh, research methodology textbooks, so many of them. So, yeah, but to me, this notice is okay if you go through it very well. So, content validity is very, very important because you have to determine whether uh, your questions actually cover the range of items that you want to measure so that you are not just measuring. Uh, like, um, I think that is this guy who was working on economics of a pig farming in last year in Eswatini. And he forgot to ask questions on income. <laughs> so 
that, that could be very terrible. So then we have what is called face validity. So face validity is we are looking at whether the questions actually have logical link with your objective. Because if your objective that you have set are not actually answered by your questions, then it's, um, it becomes another thing entirely. So just go through us some of these things that are very, very important. So don't forget. So, but uh, in terms of um, validity, there is one thing I want to, you can see so many methods we, we, we only use, that's the essence of sending the note to you. I'm taking you through because I want you to go over it yourself. But in terms of construct validity, which is the one that I want you to pay attention to more than other methods, because uh, in this case, you are actually using um, factor analysis, principal component analysis and factor analysis in order to make sure that you reduce the number of your variables to what is needed. Let me explain the way it works. Then uh, I will direct you to where you are going to look at it, study it, maybe against next time we are going to meet because I'm, going, I'm still going to put you through this very well. Um, the idea is this. You know, when, when, when you have questionnaire, and uh, for example, I will send, uh, I think I've sent it to your, to your email. There is this questionnaire used by World Bank in order to get information from uh, 150 um, um, firms in the country. And it contains so many questions, so many, so many. If I look at the question, I see so many questions. So which means you have so many variables. But you will agree with me, there is no way by which you are going to make use of all the variables in one research, never. Uh, there is one uh, master student that made that used the questionnaire for the World Bank. I think uh, she's one of our best students. So she worked on productivity of manufacturing industry, something like that. So by the time she started, she discovered that she asked 318, I'm talking of 318 variables. How can you make use of 318 variables in a research? <laughs> it's not done. So, and out of those 318, I think uh, she needed just around, around, it's not around 18, between 18 and 20 variables. That's all. For, for MSC work. So even within those 18 to 20, by the time you want to run your regression or you want to run your logic model or something else, you are not going to make use of all those ones. So you must have to decide, to decide which variable am I going to use. That is, you have to reduce um, the number of variables to those ones that actually matters. And if you are trying to do that, one of the methods is principal components approach and factor analysis. So, and then maybe later we just go through this and, and I'm telling you, I'm, uh, I will direct you to the, my site where you can go through some of these things. It's not possible for me to send it as email attachment because they're actually big. Uh, uh, video video clips. So, yeah. So please, don't worry. Just go through it. Even if you don't understand this, we still have to go through it in the class. So, that is 
principal component, then the other one is factor analysis, is the factor analysis aspect of it. So that's what I sent to you. Um, any question? Yeah. Any question now from anybody based on what we've done today and uh, concerning your assignment that you have to do? Can, I prof, can you put the assignment back on the screen for those who are still not? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Where is can you see the assignment now? Yes, Prof. Okay. Any question on the assignments? I'm okay for, for now. No okay, question. Okay, yeah. Any question from any of the uh, any of you in the class? With um, your with the R scripts that we have, I mean, with um, the session on R, yes, uh, starting um, uploading um, the packages, um, is it possible to get that R script so that we can follow and try uh, our, the practice ourselves? Perfect. No problem. We will get it. Thank you, Prof. I will send it to you. Yeah, and then, then I will send this this slide to you too. It's already in this slide, but I will send it to you too. No problem. I will send it as email attachment to you, definitely. Thank you. Any other question? So all together we have um, 12 attendance. I have your attendance here. So in case some could not join us because of this, uh, because of internet problem, we actually understand some of problem. Class rep, you are responsible to make sure that all the information get to them. Are we together? Yes, Prof. Okay, that's good. So please be your brother's keeper. That's very important. So, Prof, you will send me the recording and the notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will send the recording to you in uh, the notes. Very, very important. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Um, let me stop the share now. Any other question before I end the meeting? We are now. Um, okay, I have a question. Okay. Um, what happens because initially it was like okay this will be the lecture 
then there was a proposal that maybe midweek we'll have uh, other sessions like this one, maybe in the evening. So what's the... Uh, yeah, what's it all depends happen? on you guys. Anytime you wish, just let me know so that we are clear on, on, on the time. I can I can I can hold the next one with you any time, anyway, whether it's the night, in the morning, whatever time that is convenient for you. So I hope my 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 own thing is meet among yourself, determine a time that is convenient. Today at least we have a very good number of you in attendance to me that is all right. Because at least we have 12. I mean, that is that's fantastic. So please. We can agree on um, any time. We can just have one hour, one and a half hours, just like this. It depends on you. But let me know through your, through your um, class rep. No. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Thank you very much. All the best. Stay safe. Enjoy your life. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. See you too.